What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. Today we will be covering the IGN Dead Cells plagiarism events that took place pretty much over the last day and a half. See, the last Newswave that I did uh, yesterday, I had been editing it the night before, and the news pretty much broke and it went viral online, but we do have pretty much the full series of events and the conclusion. I do also understand that Philip is a friend of mine. He is obviously the, the center focus of this entire situation, but I'll be leaving that relationship and everything at the door, and I'll be viewing this as a neutral objective party, so you don't have to worry about any of that. We're gonna go over the whole thing. We did get a conclusion technically, as IGN did release a statement uh, pretty much capping off the whole thing. We're gonna go over all of that to get everyone caught up to speed who missed it and kind of explain what happened and I guess where everyone goes from here at this point. Now, we do have some other stuff to go over as well. We do, of course, have the Smash Bros. Direct coming up uh, later this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. We're gonna be streaming that here, going live uh, 15 to 20 minutes ahead of time. So look, uh, look for the stream to start around 9.40 a.m. or so to get people in and we'll kind of hang out, hopefully see some new characters, maybe a, a new single player or something introduced and everyone is holding out hope for a beta I, I do think that actually makes a lot of sense to kind of stress test the network servers just to get them uh, pretty much set up and ready to go for day one. It's better to get it all, you know, figured out with the beta rather than have everything crash day one if you can help it. I know obviously Smash is going to bring in a massive audience all at once day one, but we'll see what happens. Just make sure you, you come on by and uh, tune in for that. You should have a lot of fun. And we also got a little more uh, a little more information on what has been a very weird situation with the Spyro Reignited trilogy, where over on the Reddit for Spyro, uh, a box art was actually published. And we actually got a look at the back of the box art. It is in German, from uh, appears to be from uh, Amazon Germany. And you're seeing it here, and apparently this actually confirms that only one game will be included on the disc and you will need 50 gigabytes of space. Only the first game is on the disc. You will actually have to download two and three. This is all according to a translation over on the Reddit for this. And it's very weird once again to see this, but maybe the size of the games really are that big since they appear to have redone them in Unreal Engine or maybe two and three really are not done, but it's it looks pretty straightforward as to why, a or I guess Activision has not said anything about this, and that's because we're all, I guess, assuming the actual situation, and it's it's not very good because it looks like we might be right about having to download two and three, but then we see the Activision support that says apparently that they were included on the disc, apparently that might have been fake, it might not have been. This is a weird situation. Look, Activision, just come out, tell us what's happening, good or bad, just so we know what we're buying here in a little bit. It's very, it's just so weird. Okay, so let's get into this IGN Dead Cells plagiarism issue. Now, back on July 24th, we did have Boomstick Gaming who actually posted a review for Dead Cells that appears to be for the PC version as, as far as I understood, the embargo for like the Switch and I believe PS4 version and everything uh, that, that I had really uh, sent to me was set up for August 6th. So the reason I could post a video for uh, just kind of the gameplay is because there were a couple different embargoes in place. There was one for reviews, there was one for gameplay, and it was kind of all over the place. I guess the PC version was earlier, and that's why their review went up on the 24th. Uh, and it was, a, it, it was a smaller YouTuber, about 11,000 subscribers. They put their review up. They do a lot of reviews on their channel. Great, it was about four or five minute review. And then August 6th rolls around, IGN posts a 9.7 for Dead Cells, which, yeah, Dead Cells is great. It, it, honestly, if you haven't played it, it's, it's worth a pickup for the price. It's a good game. And they went th through their whole written review, and their video re video review, and at first everything looked okay until Boomstick Gaming posted a full video comparing the two, and it looked pretty clear cut that uh, the IGN review was pretty much structurally and essentially by points and criticism the same review that was posted on Boomstick Gaming. I mean, seriously, the evidence was pretty straightforward, overwhelming, very convincing, and it was pretty clear cut that uh, it was almost lifted straight from Boomstick Gaming's uh, video. I think that was pretty clear. A lot of people, pretty much everyone actually, agreed online that that was the case. There was some people that I saw that said it sounded like they were both lift, lifted from the press kit. I looked through the press kit and I, I don't really think so, to be honest. It's, um, I think it was pretty straightforward there. It's an unfortunate situation, obviously, with uh, Philip being at the, the center of this whole thing. 
And then it looked like IGN at least was concerned enough to not only pull down the review on their website, but also the video on YouTube after it had amassed nearly 90,000 views. So then it was pretty much a waiting game as they posted up that they were investigating the accusations of plagiarism. And trust me, when plagiarism gets thrown around, that is not a laughing matter. I know there's a lot of uh, a lot of things with like Watch Mojo and stuff. Oh, they're copying. Oh, they're plagiarizing. Yes, that, that is a big deal when that happens, especially for any publication that wants to be taken seriously. And I know IGN is uh, something a lot of people like to joke about, you know, too much water, all this stuff. But plagiarism is a big deal because, well, you could have a lawsuit put over that. He could have been sued over it. It was a whole thing. While Boomstick Gaming seemed like a nice enough guy, he didn't even want Philip to get uh, let go or anything. Um, he just wanted like the credit and everything to be given to him, I guess an apology. Uh, it, it still, he, he technically could have like filed and sued over this. And this probably had to have been one of the fastest, seriously, th this video went viral so fast. I mean, it was, I, Sean told me about it the night before, it was on his Facebook, and I took a look at it, and I was like, oh man, that's, okay, yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, overnight, it was everywhere. We had big places, obviously, like uh, like Kotaku covered it, then you have YouTubers jump in with Jim Sterling, Yong Ye, and then the big one, when I saw this, I was like, yep, yeah, that's that. Uh, Philip DeFranco actually covered it on the Philip DeFranco show, and when that happens, that told me it just hit what was essentially YouTube mainstream news, and then everybody knew about it. It was pretty much IGN plagiarism in the title, and IGN does not want that, obviously, to be associated with them if they're being taken seriously going forward. Plagiarism is pretty much the kiss of death in the publication or journalism field. Gaming journalism, still a journalism field. When, when you see plagiarism thrown around, that's pretty much it. So IGN decided that was that. A statement was put out yesterday, late afternoon, my time, and it did read that they had come to the determination that the evidence was very strong, too strong to be ignored, and they did have to let Philip go. Uh, he was the Nintendo editor, as some of you have probably known on uh, Nintendo Voice Chat and everything, and they did post a formal apology to Boomstick Gaming, which honestly, I think that is pretty much what Boomstick Gaming really wanted. Obviously, it was an apology, credit, and uh, he's actually gained quite a few subscribers and, and uh, obviously a, a ton of press and everything about that for his channel. So honestly, uh, for him and Dead Cells, this has kind of worked kind of out for them, obviously. Uh, Dead Cells probably didn't need all this anyway because it's a great game, and honestly, people should have bought it otherwise. But either way, there's a lot of eyeballs on both uh, Boomstick Gaming's channel and, of course, Dead Cells. This was the decision IGM was going to have to do. Uh, when plagiarism is attached to your, your company, your, your organization, you have to get rid of it. You have to cut it out as soon as possible. And keeping Philip, obviously, was not worth the risk of just having plagiarism attached to their name. Um, and that's just the way it is. When it gets that serious and you're working with a brand, a large business like IGN, it's just not worth them keeping someone like Philip, who brings the risk, obviously, of plagiarism, because at that point, they pretty much lost, he's pretty much lost trust in his editors and, and people, obviously, his bosses and everything. It's just, it's, it's, you can't keep him around. And that's just kind of the way it was. Once I heard about this and saw this and it blew up, basically, once they pulled the review down, the written and video, I, I pretty much knew, as well as I'm sure a lot of other people did, that this was probably going to be the end result. It probably would be really tough Philip to get another job in the gaming journalism world. I just don't think that's uh, really a place for him anymore with the plagiarism stuff attached to his name at this point. But of course, IGN will also have it attached to their name no matter what. Uh, they're always going to be known, I guess, at this point, at least for now, as I guess the company who lifted a review from a smaller YouTuber and posted it for 90,000 views and whatever traffic and money they made on their website. Here's the thing about IGN, and I, I want to put this out there. I'm not like a big fan of IGN or anything, right? I, we're, we're independent here. Um, we have fun with the news, taking stuff apart, all that stuff. But when you look at IGN, there's something you have to realize about the organization. There's a lot of people that work there. And when you do things like news, reviews, previews, all this stuff, it's a, it's a combined effort from a lot of different 
people, with what uh, I think most of us know that's common knowledge at this point, gaming journalism doesn't pay tremendously well for living in San Francisco, which is where they have to live. So a lot of these people do this because they truly like gaming. Honestly, if the pay was great, you wouldn't see so many of them kind of move on from IGN to better opportunities, whether it's like Greg Miller going to obviously Kind of Funny Game, Alana Pierce just left for, uh, uh, we just saw that for Funhouse, and things like that. Uh, Jose Otero going to work at Nintendo. It's just kind of the way it is. So when you, when you make fun of IGN and people who are really putting the time and effort in there, eh, maybe lighten up on that. But when something like this happens, yeah, I get why a lot of, uh, a lot of publication stuff were pretty much uh, obviously taking shots and stuff at Philip and IGN and everything because this, this is inexcusable with plagiarism and there's just really no defending it. As for Philip, I honestly hope he takes some time away from the internet. It's not a good place for him, obviously, but he does need to go back, kind of reflect on the situation and the events and everything that took place here. The one thing I will say in this whole situation, because I did see some people say, oh, he didn't even play the game and all this stuff. I can tell you personally, I talked to Philip July 17th. I checked on Twitter because we had direct messages then, and we kind of talked about Dead Cells and how we were feeling about the game. i had been playing Dead Cells for like a year. We Remember we did a video on here a long time ago on the PC, so I actually was pretty familiar with the game, and he was asking how I felt about it. I was like, yeah, this is a fun game. He said he's having a good time, and that it might be his first like 10 that he ever gives out or something. So he had been playing this for a while. There was a live stream that they also pulled down of him playing it for like 20 something minutes, and he actually was, he was showing that he obviously had confidence in playing it and everything. So he had played the game. I have no idea what, what series of events took place for him to get from uh, sitting down to write the review to pretty much lifting uh, this guy's stuff. I have no idea. Uh, I don't think any of us really know because we weren't there, but it's honestly for the evidence and everything that's there, it's pretty clear cut. So honestly, I hope Philip steps away from the internet because obviously everyone now knows him as the guy that plagiarized a smaller YouTube channel to then put up on IGN where he was paid to do it. I hope he steps away from YouTube, steps away from Twitter, steps away from everything, and just kind of reflects and kind of learns from this and moves on. I'm not really sure if he's going to be able to do anything in the gaming journalism world. Obviously, I don't think he will. Um, he could, I, t I guess, go back to YouTube. But again, everyone's going to obviously know him from IGN. So we'll see. But honestly, Philip, take some time off. Go do some stuff in the real world and... Uh, you know, I guess just just stay off the internet for a while and uh, kind of reflect on the situation, learn from it, grow from it, and move on. Next up, let's touch on The World Ends With You, final remix that is coming out this year. We heard about it back in uh, January. It is actually coming out now. That we did get a release date, October 12th for Nintendo Switch. This, of course, came out on the DS a while ago. Man, that was probably more than 10 years ago. It was uh, 2007. So it's been a long time. Uh, it also made its way, obviously, to, to cell phones and everything. And now it's coming over to the Nintendo Switch. Great game. I think there were a lot of people who probably missed out on it. It going to the Switch makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad that it's coming out uh, October-ish because if it came out closer to something like Pokemon, it definitely would have been run over, obviously. If it came out near Smash, obviously would have run over. I think October 12th is okay, even though Call of Duty and Battlefield and Red Dead are in there because uh, The World Ends With You is much different than all of those games, obviously. So I think it could live in October and be okay, despite a lot of dollars in just the video game market going towards those three big games. I think they'd be okay. It's going to be cool to see it on the Switch, and you can look out for it then, October 12th. And then finally, I'm going to leave you guys with something kind of cool. Uh, the South Park game on the Game Boy Color. It's kind of a thing of legend right now. See, there was supposedly a game that was being made by the uh, creators of South Park, and it was going to be on the Game Boy Color. And everything sounds fine there, but it never came out. And according to, again, legend online, that's because they realized that the Game Boy Color was mostly marketed towards kids. South Park, not really a kid's game, not really a game that was going to be designed for kids. So this game was actually broken up into three different games. It sounds weird, but that's pretty much what happened. And two of the games, which is very weird, were Mary Kate and Ashley games. And then the, uh, the other one was Maya the Bee. In fact, there are supposedly assets from the South Park game in the Maya Bee game, which is really funny after people data mined and found them. But that game leaked out online yesterday. It was very weird. It's one of those situations. Remember we talked about the Pokemon game that was leaked out, right? The, the beta for Pokemon Gold was leaked out. Here's another like long time retro legend, if you will, that's leaked out right now. And it's the South Park Game Boy Color game. Now I'm not gonna link you to the, to the ROM site because obviously it's a ROM, but 
it's pretty easy to find now. And while it's technically an unreleased game and you're not really technically ripping anyone off by downloading the ROM, it's still, I guess, frowned upon. So uh, if you search on Google, you should be able to find it. I would check it out. It's, it's just a piece of history. It's not particularly like a good game or anything, but it's really funny to think that there really was a South Park game that was in development and it was so far along that they actually took it, split it into three different games, which again was kind of like a uh, urban legend kind of thing. But now the proof is out there. You can download the game for yourself and you can load it up right now in a Game Boy Color emulator. Then guys, that's where I'm gonna leave News Wave today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you give the video a like, guys. If you liked it, dislike it. If not, let me know uh, your thoughts about the situation with the IG IGN plagiarism for Dead Cells and Phil. Let me know what you guys think about all that down below, the South Park game being leaked out, the stuff of legend, if you will, actually being real. It's not quite locked as monster territory, but it's still one of those things that you're like, oh, okay, that really did happen there was a South Park game that was canceled and split into multiple games. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you later on today for the Smash Bros. Direct. I hope it's really cool, although I guess if you see this afterwards, you're probably screaming at your computer right now as to what happened because it was probably pretty awesome, but I'll see you guys next time.